Wapanandra, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us as I provide an update about the latest three-week review of the coronavirus regulations. Today, I want to speak to you openly and directly about the new Omicron variant and its potential impact on Wales. Since its discovery in South Africa just over a fortnight ago, we have seen another worrying development in this long-running pandemic. Cases of the new variant have now been identified in countries all around the world, including here in the UK. The numbers in Wales at the moment are low, but we have to be prepared for these numbers to rise quickly and steeply over the coming days and weeks as it takes root in our communities. Now, there is still a lot we don't know about Omicron, and around the world, the best scientists are working hard to understand more about it. But we do know that this is a very fast-moving form of the virus. It has quickly spread through the South African province where it was first identified, infecting large numbers of people and causing a very sharp increase in hospitalizations, and that in just a fortnight. The first cases here in the UK were linked to international travel, but over a week later, there is widespread evidence of community transmission in many parts of England and Scotland. The evidence now suggests that Omicron will very quickly overtake Delta as the dominant form of the virus in the UK. We don't yet know how serious this form of illness will be, but the sheer speed at which the variant moves means that it has the potential to infect large numbers of people. That would then translate into a large increase in hospital admissions over the next month, just at the time when the NHS is already under severe and intense pressure. Now, it's still, of course, the case that we are not in the same situation as we were this time last year, thanks to our incredible vaccination programme. Today, our figures show that we have already given more than one million boosters here in Wales, giving people the extra protection from the awful virus. The World Health Organization has said that the vaccines we are using will continue to protect people from severe disease, and they remain our best defense against coronavirus. And Pfizer-BioNTech has themselves reported encouraging results from giving three doses of its vaccine against Omicron. Now, here in Wales, we're speeding up the rollout of boosters in response to the new variants. We're increasing the number of clinics. We're extending opening hours. We will offer all 18-year-olds and over a booster by the end of January. Now, we'll be vaccinating people in order of age and their clinical risk. So please, when you get an appointment, please keep it. There is nothing more important you will do that day to help to keep yourself safe. If you are over 65, and if for any reason you haven't yet had a letter about your booster appointment, now is the time to get in touch directly with your health board. Every single vaccination is a small victory against this virus. So please, make getting your vaccination your top priority. This will be the best Christmas present you can give yourself or your family this year. Now, over the last week, the Cabinet here has been reviewing the coronavirus regulations. We've carefully considered what protections we need to keep Wales safe from the current Delta wave, 
that wave is still with us now, and then to look as to how we can protect people from the Omicron wave, which we know is coming our way. Now, this is a very challenging balance. We may be about a week behind what is happening in other parts of England and Scotland, and that may give us a little bit more time here in Wales to learn and to act. But because of the speed at which things may change, the Cabinet will move from a three-week cycle of decision-making to a one-week cycle. That means all the things that I am announcing today are here for the next week, and then we will review the situation again. We'll be monitoring the public health circumstances very closely to consider whether we need to put additional protections in place to keep Wales safe, and of course, we will keep you updated about any changes that might need to be made. Now, we've already tightened some measures over the last fortnight, introducing new rules on international travel and self-isolation, but for the next week, Wales will remain at alert level zero. Within that alert level, there are things we can and should do to help to protect ourselves and to disrupt the transmission of the virus. We strongly urge everyone to flow before you go. That means taking a lateral flow test before you go out. Whether that's to a Christmas party, Christmas shopping, visiting friends or family, going to any crowded or busy place and before travelling. If that lateral flow test is positive, then of course, don't go out at all. Arrange for a PCR test and self-isolate. Students preparing to leave college and university for Christmas should test before they travel. Everyone should wear face coverings in pubs and restaurants when they aren't eating or drinking. Everyone must wear a face covering in most other indoor public places in line with the law, including in cinemas and theatres. Wherever you can, please work from home. That really does help. And over the next few days, we will be issuing new guidance for visiting in care homes and in hospitals. We all want to do whatever we can to support visiting where it is safe to do so. But if we do see a new wave of cases, some strengthened measures to protect patients, staff and residents may be needed. Now, none of us wanted to hear the news about the new Omicron variant. After almost two years of the pandemic, we had all hoped that we would have put coronavirus behind us this Christmas. Unfortunately, it is a simple matter of fact that we are once again facing an uncertain future. But we have faced challenges many times during this pandemic, and we have learnt from each one. Now we must put all of that to work again, with every one of us doing everything we can to protect ourselves and our loved ones. Please follow all the advice and all the measures which have helped to keep us safe during the pandemic so far. Let's stay safe and stay well this Christmas. Diolchenwald, ich geht. Now, uh, as usual, I'll turn to take some questions, and as ever, the answer to all the questions will be broadcast live on the Welsh Government's own social media channels. Uh, and first, today, over to Jenny Rees at BBC Wales. 
afternoon. You've mentioned it there about hospitalisation. Um, typically, we see hospitals feeling that impact as much as two weeks later, um, which takes us right up to Christmas. Should we be bracing ourselves to rearrange to cancel plans to go and visit friends and family? Uh, likewise, might businesses be asked to, to make some last minute changes? Could I have that answer in Welsh as well, please? Of course, Jenny. So look, the advice of the Welsh Government to people in Wales is this, that we should approach Christmas by doing all those things which we know can help to protect us and other people from the virus. Make sure that you are vaccinated and take up those appointments. Wear a mask in crowded public places. Think about the people you are meeting, especially if you are meeting people whose underlying health conditions make them particularly vulnerable to the virus. All those simple things, the social distancing, the things we've learned to do, can keep us on track. And that's how we should all be approaching Christmas. So, a neges ac a cyngor o ddiwth o llywodraeth i bobl yng Nghymru yn glir, a ffordd i mynd ymlaen at y nadolig yw trwy wneud popeth ni wedi dysgu i wneud dy gilydd yn ystod y pandemig. Cael y brechiad, defnyddio mwgawdau, golchi dwylo, pellter cymdeithasol, perchi parchu bobl eraill, a pethau ni'n gallu wneud dy gilydd yw y pethau sy'n wneud wahaniaeth, sy'n gallu cadw ni gyd yn saff a cadw ni at, a ar y llwybr at y nadolig. The language you've used so far has been pretty strong, and yet there are no significant changes today. If you had the financial levers to compensate businesses or individuals, would you have gone further today? And if so... What would you have done? Uh, no, uh, Jenny, I don't think we would have gone further today because for the week ahead of us, Delta is still going to be the dominant variant in Wales, we believe. And had we only been facing Delta, then I think our pathway through Christmas and into the new year, new year would have been reasonably straightforward because with only Delta to deal with, the numbers of people falling ill in Wales are too high, but they are stable, and the number of people needing hospital care has been declining over the last two weeks. So for the next week, we feel that we can continue with that level of restrictions we've currently got, enhancing it in the way that I've described today. But we are going to move our decision-making forward. We're not going to wait three weeks because in three weeks, an awful lot could have changed. So these are arrangements for the next seven days. And then this time next week, we will be reviewing all the evidence, everything that is happening in Scotland, in London, in particular, the emerging evidence from South Africa. We'll know more about the extent to which Omicron has come into Wales. It's very modest at the moment, but we must expect that to rise. And then we'll make another set of decisions when we've gathered all that learning and we know the situation we'll face uh, in a week's time. But for the week ahead, we think we can continue to manage things in a way that is safe and keeping Wales open because Delta, which we know about, familiar with dealing with it, will continue to be the dominant variant. Jenny, thank you very much indeed. Uh, over to Ellie Pitt at ITV Wales. Hi there, First Minister. Um, first of all, that despite no new restrictions, we're hearing from hospitality owners that they are already experiencing Christmas cancellations and losing large sums of money. What support is there going to be from the Welsh Government for that sector again? Because they're being punished due to the Omicron vir uh, virus. And should people be going ahead with social events? We've seen Stereophonics cancel their gigs, but others are going ahead. Should they be? Uh, well, of course, uh, you know, I recognise the enormous pressures that the hospitality industry has faced. And we, you know, we remain in very regular dialogue with the industry. Uh, my colleague, Vaughan Gethin, announced £45 million in new investment to help businesses in Wales uh, only a week or so uh, ago. And we continue to work within the Welsh Government to see what funds we could bring together. 
uh, to help businesses further if we are facing you know, a really challenging time with the Omicron variant. If that variant were to sweep across the whole of the United Kingdom at a speed and with an intensity that some of the models are now suggesting, then the economic impact could only be absorbed with action from the Treasury at the UK level. Uh, mm -hmm. No devolved government by itself could manage to provide the level of support that would be necessary in those uh, circumstances. So I've already uh, made that point directly to the UK government and we'll have an opportunity to do so again uh, this afternoon. The Treasury has to be around the table as we plan ahead for what might be coming uh, our way. Uh, as to the choices that people should make, I really think it's not for the Welsh Government to micromanage uh, uh, people's individual decisions. I'll just repeat what I've said already, that if people are intending to go out to any sort uh, of gathering, then they need to do so in a conscious way. They need to have thought about it before uh, they embark. I myself was uh, in Swansea uh, this morning at an event at the Guild Hall. I took a lateral flow test before I left home this morning to give me the confidence that you know, I wouldn't be putting other people at risk. If you are going to a gathering of any sort, think about the things you can do. Vaccination, testing, mask wearing, that repertoire of things that we know builds up our defences and can help to keep us safe in the run-up to Christmas. Thank you. Um, you said that you're moving to weekly reviews. Are you trying to wait until Senedd breaks up for Christmas before introducing tougher restrictions so you can avoid scrutiny on those? Um, absolutely not. Uh, I'm afraid Omicron uh, doesn't come to match anybody's timetable. Uh, next week is the last week of the Senedd. Uh, the Senedd can be recalled uh, if they were to be uh, major decisions that were necessary. And our Senedd uh, met right through the earlier waves of, uh, the, uh, of the pandemic while Parliament in Westminster uh, wasn't meeting at all. So uh, if there are decisions we need to make and the Senate needs to scrutinise them, uh, I'm sure a way will be found to make sure that that can happen. Uh, Ellie, thank you very much indeed to Will Hayward at Wales Online. Uh, thank you, First Minister. Can you paint us a picture of what you think are the best and worst case scenarios for Wales in terms of restrictions and deaths over Christmas uh, and then through to the end of January? And if I could just ask you about the Prime Minister as well, um, Ian Blackford has said that he has lost the moral authority to lead and should stand aside. Do you think that Boris Johnson retains the moral authority to govern? And would you, like Mr Blackford, like to see him stand down? Uh, well, in the first part of the question, uh, Will, the sort of... Um the variables that make it so difficult to predict exactly what we will see over the next week uh, include these, aren't they? We're not completely sure uh, how um, severe an illness the Omicron variant uh, will provide. So there's a lot of work going on to find out that. We're, we're, I think as sure as we need to be now that it will spread very fast. But will it be more severe? We don't know enough about that. The context in the United Kingdom is different to the South African context. The age structure of our population is different. The nature of our health service is different. And we have a much more highly vaccinated population with, as I said, you know, a million people in Wales already having had their boosters. And we don't know exactly how strong a protection that will uh, provide. If we are at the fortunate end of the spectrum, that it's a milder illness, that the booster programme gives you a significant defence against it, then the models show that the impact will be very real because of the speed, but that it's probably absorbable by our public services. If it turns out that the variant is as severe or more severe than Delta, if the vaccine escape is greater than uh, we would have hoped for, then models will show that that impact will be much more difficult to manage. Uh, you know, we're not at a point where the modelling is sufficiently secure for us to know which of those paths, but the, that's the spectrum for you, a spectrum between it being 
difficult but manageable to being difficult and additional actions being ne needed in order to manage it. And as for the Prime Minister, you know, it, it, it's not for me. Uh, I don't operate uh, in Parliament. Mr Blackford uh, does. Uh, I focus on uh, my job and trying to do my job as best I can. Thank you. And um, can I just um, ask you a bit about when you would bring in restrictions? Um, you've said that Omicron cases are going to surge, and that's a, that's a given now. And if the doubling time is two or three days, we could go from a few cases to hundreds of thousands of cases in a matter of weeks. Given this time frame, by the time we know if these cases will result in widespread hospitalizations, there could be huge amounts of COVID already in the community. So at what point would you bring in restrictions? Um, will it be as soon as cases start to rise? And if so, restrictions are by your own prediction, um, predictions guaranteed. Or are we going to wait to see if cases cause serious disease? Um, it could be too late to prevent many deaths. So what metrics will you be using to trigger a, a lockdown or severe restrictions? Yeah, well, look, uh, well, thank you. I think you've summarised the dilemma uh, there very well. Um, the advice from SAGE has long been that if you know there is a problem coming towards you, you should try and act early and try to get ahead of the problem as best you can. And we have done our best to follow that advice here uh, in Wales. So while I can't give a sort of precise sense of what exactly would trigger action, when exactly action would happen, I'm happy to set out that general principle that if we see a situation in Wales coming at us because of what we see happening elsewhere that tells us that action needs to be taken, difficult as it is and upsetting as it can be, I still think the right thing to do is to follow that advice because that way you at least manage to make what is going or could be going to be a very difficult situation. You at least bring it back into the manageable part of the spectrum rather than waiting and finding that things have got so bad that it's uh, very difficult indeed to make any difference. Thank you. Thanks, Will. To Dan Bevan at LBC. Thank you, First Minister. Good afternoon to you. A report came out yesterday claiming that you'd called for a lockdown between Christmas and New Year in a meeting on Wednesday night. Now, the Welsh Government are yet to deny that claim, and a source has told us that it was something that you had suggested. So could you set the record straight for us, First Minister? Have you called for a lockdown, yes or no? And if so, why? Uh, well, Dan, you're not going to draw me into a conversation. Uh, on distorted accounts of a meeting uh, where those accounts are a gross violation of the rules under which those meetings uh, are conducted and where the motivation of whoever it was that carried out that gross violation was simply to cause a distraction from the many, many difficulties that the UK government has experienced uh, this week. So I'm not going to be drawn into that game. Uh, what I will say uh, is this. Do I urge the UK government to plan ahead? Do I urge the UK government to take the actions that are necessary in order to meet the challenge of coronavirus? I've done that time after time from this platform, and I'm very happy to repeat it again today. And uh, another source in Welsh sports has told us that they've been told to plan for new restrictions in January. So could you be clear with the sector, First Minister, and also everyone who's listening, is it time to expect more restrictions next month? Uh, well, it's time to plan for what might be coming our way. Planning for what might happen does not mean that it will happen. It simply means that while you have the chance to do so, you should be thinking and preparing. I just think that is such simple common sense. Given everything that we are learning about the Omicron variant, anybody running a business or a public service surely should be asking themselves the question, if something did become necessary, what would we do? How would we do it? It doesn't mean to say that you will end up in that position. It simply means that you are doing that common sense thing of using the chance while you've got it to think ahead and plan ahead. Dan Dichenvaur, Drau i Gwyn Loder, Nwyddion. 
Rhwng y prif weinidog. Ar hyn o bryd, rhwng treian a hanner labordau profi y Deyrnas Unedig sy'n gallu canfod yr estrin dropout um, sef beth yw am, amrywiolyn Omicron. Um, ydych chi felly yn gofidio y gallu gwir nifer yr achosion yma yng Nghymru fod dipyn yn uwch na beth sydd wedi cael ei adrodd hyd at nawr? O, oh, wel, dwi'n, dwi'n siŵr mae hwn yn uh, wir. Uh, dim ond naw o bobl ni'n gwybod amdano, ond bydd fwy o bobl na hynny uh, yng Nghymru. Mae, mae hwn yn wir bob tro. Uh, uh, un o'r resymau yw, ac os mae labordau a hyn o bryd ddim wedi uh, i gyd wedi uh, bod yn gallu um, ffindio uh, amrywiolyn newydd. Uh, yma yng Nghymru, yn y gogledd, uh, mae'r profion yn y gogledd wedi mynd i macynion i'r labordau na ti yn gallu uh, wneud hynny. Uh, mae'r labordau uh, Public Health Wales mae nhw'n gallu wneud e a nawr mae labordau sydd da ni uh, yn casnewydd yn y de uh, mae nhw'n gallu wneud e uh, hefyd. Uh, ond jyst yn cyffredinol uh, ni'n gwybod pa ni'n rhoi bob dydd yn nifer, nifer o bobl sy'n diodd e o'r ar ymrywiolyn Delta, mae mwy o bobl yn y gymuned sy'n diodd er o Delta, na mae'r ffygyrau yn dangos. Uh, Gwyn jyst asgu mi, uh, if the fact that not all laboratories have been able to uh, detect the S-gene dropout means that the number of people who we know have got the uh, Omicron variant is an underestimate of the number of people who have it in Wales, and I've said I'm sure that is actually the case, uh, that whenever we declare numbers, and we declare every day the number of people who've fallen ill with the Delta variant, there are always more people and the testing system uh, has been able to detect. In North Wales, tests have generally gone to a laboratory in Manchester that is able to detect the S-gene uh, dropout. Public Health Wales laboratories are able to do that. And now, the major laboratory that we have in Newport in South Wales is also uh, in that position. Ac o, o bod hynny felly prif yn ei dog, um, a ddylen ni fod yn paratoi fwy fwy at, at rhagor o gyfyngiadau hynny yw os yw'r nifer dipyn yn uwch na beth i'n gwybod ar hyn o bryd ydy cyfyngiadau yn fwy tybygol dros y rwythnos neu ddwy nesaf. Uh, wel, y peth pwysig yw i paratoi. Dydyn ni ddim yn gwybod yn union beth i'n mynd i digwydd dros yr wythnosau sydd i ddod, achos mae lot o pethau dydyn ni ddim yn gwybod ar hyn o bryd a am yr amrywiolyn a newydd. Mae pobl yn gweithio mor galed i ffindio pethau mas dyna pam ni wedi symud at a adolygu ar reoliadau bob wthnos neu bob tair a wthnos. So, ni'n ofyn i bobl i feddwl am y dyfodol, i paratoi rhagofn bydd rhaid i ni wneud pethau, ond dydy hwnna ddim yn digon glir i ni heddi yna pan bara un o'r fan hyn siwr o fod i gwener nesa pan ni wedi cael fwy o wybodaeth uh, i fewn. Um, Gwyn's question was a question about uh, preparing for uh, the possibility that we will have to take further actions because of uh, the spread of the new variant. And I was simply uh, explaining again that we should prepare we should use the time we've got to think ahead, to think about what might be necessary. It's why we're moving to a weekly rather than a three-weekly cycle, because it's the nature of the Omicron variant particularly that there still are important things we don't know enough about. We will learn a lot as each day goes by. We have to speed up the cycle of our decision-making and use the time we have if we do happen to be a week or so behind the impact of the variant elsewhere in the United Kingdom to use that time to plan and to prepare. Uh, Gwen uh, over to Lily Hewitson at GB News. Thank you, First Minister. Um, do you think the reports of parties at number 10 will make people in Wales less likely to follow any new guidance? Uh, well, I think there's one very important difference that we have here in Wales, and the same will be true of Scotland and Northern Ireland, which is that we have a government of our own uh, here in Wales. And the messages that we have given to people in Wales have, throughout the pandemic, been very different to the ones that the Prime Minister has conveyed across the border. I have never come here 
and said to people in Wales, it'll all be over in 12 weeks, it'll all be over by Easter, it'll all be over by Christmas, that Freedom Day was an irreversible set of decisions. Uh, those are the things that I think tend to erode people's confidence in what government says. If government is always saying things, that is at the impossibly optimistic uh, end of the spectrum. Here in Wales, we have tried as a government to go on explaining to people the coronavirus is not over, that we've got to go on doing the things we do, that if we act cautiously and carefully, that is the best way of keeping each other safe. And I hope the fact that people in Wales have had that consistent messages here in Wales mean that we will go on, as we have been very lucky to have up until now, the support of the vast bulk of people in Wales who go on every day thinking and acting carefully and playing their part. Thank you. Um, and lastly, can you give any certainty to the hospitality industry that they'll be able to remain open throughout the festive period? Um, and if they'll have to implement the COVID passes at any point, as it's the run up to Christmas in just two weeks, it's going to take a little bit of time and planning for them, particularly after what happened last year. Well, I absolutely recognise uh, that, that you can't just make these things happen overnight. We have decided not to introduce the COVID pass in hospitality over the next week. What I can say with certainty is this, that we will carry on in close dialogue with the sector, that we will share with them the information that we are getting about the impact of the new variant, that we will always listen to what they say to us about the best way in which they can stay open and stay open safely. That's always been our aim. Keep Wales safe and keep Wales open. And even in the challenging weeks that may lie ahead where further action may inescapably be needed, we will only ever do that in the best dialogue we can have with the sectors that might be directly affected. Uh, Louis, th uh, Lily, thank you very much indeed. Over to Harry Henson at That's TV. Good afternoon, First Minister. Uh, there's been reports today that head teachers across Wales are in talks of closing early um, for Christmas in response to the Omicron variant. What can you tell me about this, and is this likely to be true? Uh, well, uh, I am uh, aware, of course, that across Wales, local education authorities are continuing to have discussions with schools and head teachers. Uh, most local education authorities plan to end school at the end of next week, but there are, I think, around eight local authorities who have uh, school terms that end on about the 22nd uh, of December, and they will be having discussions about how to make sure that they can bring the school term to an end uh, carefully and safely. We have a shared ambition from the Welsh Government, local education authorities, teacher unions and people at the front line to keep as many children in school as safely as we can right up to the end of term. But what I know our head teachers will be looking to do is if their individual circumstances mean they have to make other choices, that they do that in an orderly way and that they give their parents notice of any changes they need to make. So, you know, there's a framework that we have set out. It does allow for local uh, decisions the intention behind the framework is to keep children in school to the end of term because of the disruption that people have experienced in their education. But local decision making within that framework is allowed. I would want to see it done in an orderly way. If, if local education authorities or parent or schools are planning anything different, I think they would want to give their parents the longest possible notice. Thank you. And um, you've announced today that restrictions will be assessed every seven days rather than every three weeks. This could mean that restrictions are tightened over Christmas. And if this does happen, it's undoubtedly going to have an impact on the people of Wales's mental health. So if that's the case, will the government be willing to provide more funding to Welsh mental health services? Uh, well, we have provided more funding to mental health services very regularly during the pandemic, particularly those are, sorry, the, the jargon is tier zero. It, it means those 
uh, frontline services that are on the high street where you don't need an appointment, where you can just go and speak to somebody on the phone or in person or indeed uh, have some help uh, online so that people who are affected by the impact of the virus are able to get help as quickly as they can and in a way that is proportionate to the to the experience that they are going through. And as I said in an answer to an earlier question, as part of this week's uh, discussions and thinking ahead, the Welsh Government uh, are looking to see what additional help we would be able to mobilise if we found ourselves in a position where a more significant level of protection was needed to help us to deal with the emergence of this new variant. Harry, thank you very much. Uh, over finally for today to Tom Magna at Carers World. Thank you very much indeed, First Minister. With the Omicron variant upon us, Cardiff and Bale University Health Force has called on unpaid carers to do more to free up paid care workers in return for uncertain financial help. I'm waiting to hear more from the board about the detail, but in the meantime, can I see what your reaction on two key points is uh, uh, that concern our audience particularly? What the board seems to be saying is that if someone already has a whole needs assessment and care packages arising from rights under the Social Services Wellbeing Act, that these should be abandoned for the greater good to make up for too few paid care workers. Interested in your thoughts? Well, um, Tom, I, I don't think it would be fair to use the, the language of abandonment. Uh, what we know is happening is that at the front line, we simply do not have enough people in work to do all the things that the system is committed to doing and wants to do. Uh, and that is for a variety of reasons, but it is partly because of the number of people who themselves are ill uh, or have been in direct contact with somebody who is ill and they're therefore not able to be in work because they are working with vulnerable people where extra care is necessary. So I don't think anybody is uh, moving to a position where we just want to abandon anybody. But the only way we are able to deal with the enormous pressures that there are and to make sure that those people whose needs are the most intense and who are the greatest risk that we use the scarce resource we have to make sure they are helped is if we can mobilise help right across the spectrum. I know how much unpaid carers do already every single day and I know that it must feel you know, your heart must sink if you think you're going to be asked to do uh, even more. But we are going to be asking even more of an enormous number of people, including those exhausted staff that we have in social care and the health service who are now facing the uncertainty of yet another cruel twist in this virus. Uh, you seem to have some sympathy for for both camps, if I can put it like that. Can I now ask you, in, in view of what you've just said, uh, your government has spent thousands on a very welcome Carer Aware campaign. There's the, your newly released Carer's Strategy. Isn't this pressure, and it must be pressure in some form, even subtle, that the board appear to be putting on unpaid carers? Uh, do you think it's unacceptable in terms of your campaign, of course? It, you might think it to be counterproductive. Thank you. I don't think the board will be trying to put pressure on unpaid carers. What it is trying to do is to appeal to people who have given incredibly generously of their time, their commitment, uh, to see if there is anything more that they would be able to contribute at a point when the whole system is under such enormous pressure. So. Uh, I hope nobody feels that they are being pressurised into doing things. Tom, you'll know much more than me uh, just how dedicated uh, and committed paid care, unpaid carers in Wales have been. And I think the appeal to the board from the board is, is that where people feel able to do a bit more that we will find a way of making that happen in order to try to relieve some of the pressure that is undoubtedly there for people who can only manage through the day where there is 
paid and specialist care available to allow them to go on living in their own homes or to be released from hospital back to where they would much rather be. Thank you all very much indeed. Diolch yn fawr.